Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are looking at an attack on one of America's most famous buildings, the 1997 Empire State Building Attack by Lone Wolf Ali Hassan Abu Kamal. Ali Hassan Abu Kamal was born on the 19th of September 1927 in Jaffa in what was then mandatory Palestine, a geopolitical entity established between 1920 and 1948 in the region of Palestine under the terms of a mandate of Palestine in modern day Israel and Palestine. Today Jaffa is part of Israel. During the 1949 Arab-Israeli War, Abu Kamal's family fled Jaffa for Gaza. The 1948 Arab-Israeli War was the second and final siege of the 1947-1949 Palestine War and began at midnight. On the 14th of May 1948, following the end of a British mandate for Palestine, with the Israeli Declaration of Independence being enacted earlier on the 14th of May 1948, the military coalition of Arab states, including Egypt, Transjordan, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia and Yemen entered British Palestine on the 15th of May 1948, leading to a conflict between Israel and the Arab states following the Israeli Declaration of Independence. The war ended on the 10th of March 1949 with Israeli victory and a defeat of the Arab League and Palestine. An estimated 6,373 Israelis were killed with up to 7,000 members of the Arab League killed and between 3,000 and 13,000 Palestinians killed. Abu Kamal taught English at a local high school and university in Gaza as a well-paid tutor and translator. He eventually married Fatia Abu Kamal and had six children, living in an affluent suburb of Gaza and earning 3,000 US dollars per month. In 1992, Abu Kamal was kidnapped by followers of a Hamas group and severely beaten for smoking hashish and drinking alcohol. In 1996, at the age of 69, Abu Kamal decided that his family should emigrate to the United States of America. He obtained a legal non-immigrant visa and arrived in New York on the 24th of December 1996, leaving his remaining family in Palestine. He remained in close contact with his family and called them three times a week. Initially, Abu Kamal lived at the McBurney YMCA on West 23 Paula Maliandi. On the 11th of January 1997, he flew to Melbourne, Florida to see a friend who was living there and stayed at the River Oaks Motel and Efficiencies in Melbourne, Florida. The Strip Motel of 10 rooms is a low-rent motel costing $150 per week. He was seen as polite by the motel's owners and stayed in his room a lot other than periodically visiting a young friend as well as praying at the Islamic Society of Brevard. However, he did exhibit some strange behaviours including standing around nude with his door open despite facing US Highway 1. On the 25th of January 1997, Abu Kamal went to the Oaks Trading Post and purchased a 14-shot .380 caliber Beretta 84 handgun. On the 1st of February, he returned to New York by Greyhound bus, carrying his gun. On the 21st of February 1997, he telephoned his wife, Fatia Abu Kamal, stating that he had no money and would be returning to Palestine shortly. On the 22nd of February 1997, Abu Kamal visited the Empire State Building observation deck on the 86th floor, one of New York's most popular tourist attractions, and aimed to take out a premeditated attack. At 5pm on the 23rd of February 1997, Abu Kamal went back to the observation deck and confronted individuals shouting, Are you from Egypt? as well as, You are Italian? or American. Shortly after 5pm, Abu Kamal started shooting using his 14-shot .380 caliber Beretta 84 handgun. He wounded six people and killed 27-year-old Christopher Bunister, a Danish musician of the band Pilots 
who was living in New York and was visiting the Empire State Building with bandmate Matthew Gross, who was critically wounded in the attack. Abu Kamal proceeded to shoot himself in the head, dying five hours later in hospital. The wounded were mostly tourists visiting New York. A French couple from Verdun, 44-year-old Patrice Damonge and 36-year-old Virginia Damonga, whose 16-year-old daughter escaped injury, 32-year-old Jacob Chard of Switzerland, 52-year-old Mario Camona of Mendoza, Argentina, as well as Hector Mendez of the Bronx. Two children were hurt when they were knocked from their parents' arms and four women suffered minor injuries in the rush to the exit. A pair of identical letters were found in Abu Kamal's pouch around his neck, which was a diatribe against the Big Free, the United States of America, France and the United Kingdom. The letters were against the Big Free's mistreatment of Palestinians as well as against Zionism, which he said oppressed Palestinians. However, Abu Kamal's wife offered an alternative explanation, believing that his real motive was financial ruin. The letter had named two business partners who Abu Kamal claimed had swindled him out of money and that he had lost $300,000 in a business venture. Fatia Abu Kamal told the press, My husband is not a terrorist. He was just hopeless. He was aged. He had nothing to do with politics or terrorism or crime. Initially, this was seen as the reason behind Abu Kamal's attack, despite numerous feelings that it manifested through anti-Zionism. However, in February 2007, 10 years after the shooting, Linda Abu Kamal, Abu Kamal's daughter, told the New York Daily News, a newspaper based in New York, that she was tired of lying and that the aim of the attack was to punish the United States of America for supporting Israel in what was seen as a pro-Palestinian attack, avenging America through attacking one of its most iconic buildings to make sure that they got the message. The reason provided by Fatia Abu Kamal was given by the Palestinian National Authority, the interim self-government body of Palestine, who forced Fatia Abu Kamal to lie and distract from her husband's motivation of anti-Zionism. This was verified by a letter received by the family three days after the attack, as well as the diary kept by Abu Kamal, which was burnt by his wife, fearing that it would cause the family trouble. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.